Okay, I'm not gonna lie, never in my wildest dreams did I think we'd be making a video about Cole Spicer, a Boston Bruins fourth round pick from the 2022 draft, who, as you can see, is an unsigned player, 5'10", 174, left-handed center, 19 years old, out of Grand Forks, USA. Spicer was an interesting pickup by the Bruins back in 2022 because in this time span, the guy was playing for the NTDP. He had a good amount of points, 39 points in 58 games played, and suited up for the world under 18s with Team USA. Since then, he has been a University of Minnesota Duluth player in the NCAA, but the reason we're making this video here today is because of the progression of this prospect. He went from Minnesota Duluth last year to Minnesota Duluth this year, and now he is ending off the season in the USHL with the Youngstown Phantoms. Now, you could look at this and say, all right, well, it just looks like a regular progression. A guy's going from NCAA hockey down a tier to the USHL. What's the big deal about that, Lego? What's going on here? Well, the reason we're talking about Spicer is because of this development. It's really strange, and we don't have too many answers. So what I wanted to do was do my own kind of investigation and try to, I don't know, put things together in a way that's a little bit easier to understand if you're kind of confused about this. Now, Cole Spicer, if you wanted the profile, the scouting report on Elite Prospects goes over it pretty well. While most players his age tend to cut their defensive routes a couple of steps short, in hopes of capitalizing on a quick breakout pass, Spicer goes all the way. He finishes his checks, he pins players to the boards, and he wins pucks back. Spicer takes advantage of the mistakes of the opposition. For a bigger look, we have ourselves the Dauber Prospects report from last year. Cole Spicer is a hard-working two-way forward who distributes the puck efficiently, and he has potential as a middle six NHL forward. This was written by Dauber. Link is going to be in the description if you want to see more about this, because if you look at the April 2023 report on Spicer, he had a disappointing offensive season, scoring just three goals and three assists in his freshman season at Minnesota Duluth. These numbers are not a cause for concern yet, as Spicer completed the season as an 18-year-old, making him one of the youngest players in college hockey. Spicer will need to develop his offensive game, as he was always more of a two-way forward, focusing more on his defense. Spicer projects to be more so of a middle six forward at the NHL level, and could be a solid complementary piece with some skilled players. If Spicer eventually manages to make it to the NHL, he could increase his offensive production, but his fantasy ceiling still isn't very high. This was written by Nate Duffett earlier this season. Now, when it comes to Spicer and the progression, as you can see, you know, he's getting a few more points now than he did last year. Six points in 32 games is not great, especially for a guy who was roughly around the 40-point mark with the NTDP. And seeing his progression this season, nine points in 17 games is a lot better than what he had last year. But we had interesting developments with Spicer earlier this week as it was announced by USCHO that Minnesota Duluth's Cole Spicer is now ruled academically ineligible for the second half of the 23-24 college hockey season. Attached is an article that goes over the situation, but it doesn't really dive too deeply into what this all means. Now, if you scroll down into this article, it says that Spicer can practice, but he cannot play any games with the club. Minnesota Duluth coach Scott Sandlin told Duluth News Tribune that we'll figure it out. Guys are going to get a chance, Sandlin said in the report. Some guys are going to move up. Some guys are going to get different chances. Braden Fisher is here. He's a center. He's going to get an opportunity, and we'll see how that goes. If not, we'll have some time to figure out if that's going to work or if we need to move somebody else in there, too. Spicer, a fourth-round draft pick of the Boston Bruins, has five goals and nine points in 17 games. Now, before we go deep into everything else that people are talking about, we will go out there and say this. This tweet from Gage Osmus goes out there and says it pretty well. One thing to consider here about the Spicer situation, he got through the NTDP with no problems. I can assure you that program is much harder to get through than college, hockey, and school together. None of us know what Spicer is going through. Something must be going on that we don't know about. So be kind and wish the kid well. He's got a bright future ahead, and this will only make him better. Now, I'm honestly not going to 100% agree on whether or not this is going to make him better downgrading from the NCAA to the USHL's Youngstown Phantoms. It was revealed later on that per the USHL's transactions website, Spicer has been added to Youngstown's team. He was deemed academically ineligible to play at UMD for the second semester. Now, the interesting thing about this is that he was already 
playing in the NCAA full-time last year. He had the full season under his belt. He played 32 games this season. It's really interesting to note how he was able to play for the first semester, but he's ineligible for the second. Now, whatever that means, we'll go out there and discuss further in the video, but there are, despite the fact that there are some people saying, yeah, be kind to this guy, there are still some people going out there being a little bit cynical about this entire thing. Bruins Bender podcast went out there and tweeted this out, that Spicer is academically ineligible. He's not going to be able to play. This means one of two things, Cam Bummel goes out there and says. One, he wants to play in the CHL and he wasn't a fan of college or the coach. Or two, he severely lacks discipline and needs to grow up. That I don't really recognize as a possibility here since, I mean, look, the first tweet goes out there and says that he did play with the NTDP, which is very strict and a lot more, let's just say, demanding for a young man than I think college would be. Not that college isn't demanding, it's just the NTDP has you balancing out everything with high school and you're playing multiple games a week. The NCAA, you only play like two games every weekend. It's a little bit different. So I don't necessarily agree here. Maybe he does want to play in the CHL. Who really knows? But if that's the case, then why would he be going to the USHL, right? But also, to do a little bit more digging into this entire situation, I wanted to explore what exactly academically ineligible means. There is an article here on the NCSA Collegiate Recruiting website that goes out there and talks about NCAA eligibility requirements for student-athletes. Now, if we go over to what Spicer was playing for, he was on the Minnesota Duluth NCAA team, which plays in the NCHC. Now, the NCHC is Division I hockey, so if we go to down in this article to the Division 1 section, we can see that there are a few things that you need to get out there for. For high school students enrolling in college full-time programs in 23 and 24, you need to complete 16 core courses using a pass and fail grade. You need four years of English, three years of math, algebra run or higher, natural physical science, including one year of lab if offered, two years you need for that, two years of social science, and additional courses, one year of English math or science, four years of English math, science, foreign language, or comparative religion or philosophy. That's really interesting. I didn't realize that high schools in America had comparative religion as a class. And then you need a 2.3 GPA core course progression. You must complete 10 core courses by the beginning of your senior year or your seventh semester. Among these 10, seven must be in the subjects of English, math, or natural physical science. This is known as the 10-7 rule. You also need to graduate high school. Now, this is all for athletes who are graduating high school and entering the NCAA. It doesn't necessarily include guys who were in the NCAA already and who ended up, I don't know, failing out of classes or whatever. We don't know all the intricate details as to how this is going down. In fact, this same article talking about NCAA eligibility goes out there and says this. 75% of college student athletes typically meet their NCAA academic minimums. Just because you're a good student doesn't guarantee academic eligibility though. Surprisingly, every year, student athletes with 3.5 GPAs and honors courses are declared academically ineligible due to not meeting one of the following NCAA eligibility requirements. So, it says here that just because a student is smart, just because they have honors courses and a high GPA, it does not mean they're automatically going to be in the NCAA playing sports. Sometimes guys who have high GPAs and good grades actually don't meet the requirements. So there are other extenuating things that aren't necessarily highlighted here. I mean, there are amateurism requirements, signing contracts, division one eligibility requirements that we had just talked about. What exactly does this mean though? I'm not really too sure. But ultimately, because the conclusion here is that there are guys that do exhibit good grades that for some reason or another are not eligible to play in the NCAA, it means that for Cole Spicer, the situation here isn't necessarily, oh, the guy failed his classes, like the guy isn't smart, he's dumb, like it's not necessarily that. There's a very good possibility that some other extra stuff went on here that we just didn't know about, especially if it's to the magnitude where he is only academically ineligible. He's still able to practice with the team, but he can't play in any games, and because you know, this is a prospect with NHL hope, and he wants to play in the National Hockey League in the future, if not, maybe make a pro career for himself, then he'd rather go to the USHL and play hockey games, actually develop, and hopefully get his offensive touch back. 
because that seems to be like a pretty good reasonable conclusion as well. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about Cole Spicer, Boston Bruins prospect that has gone through a really weird path of getting banned from his NCAA team and where things have gone since then. What are your thoughts on the entire process here? What are your thoughts on his development? And if you're a Bruins fan, what are your thoughts on him as an overall projectable player for your team in a few years? Do you think he makes the show? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.